All right. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's holidays are good and happy new year. Welcome to the new year, 2023. Um, figured on this first day, I, I have to make a new YouTube video. So today I actually wanted to talk about um, uh, NFT collection that I've held probably since last fall. Um, I actually did have to sell my holdings because of, you know, bear market, etc. But um, something I've been excited about for a while, I got my friends on and it's Milady Maker NFT collection. And, you know, before you think, wow, you know, that sounds like nonsense, hear me out, all right? Um, today's video is really about the transformative value of NFTs, um, of the Milady Maker NFTs. And, you know, on that point, um, what do I really mean by transformative value? I think it's first off important to distinguish between um, a transformation in a narrative sense, so narrative change versus transformation in system so systemic change and i'd argue that milady maker is you know milady nfts are a good example of um narrative change right so you know they follow the same systems um like OpenSea for the nft marketplace or twitter for community interactions um or discord for you know token holder interactions you know like like more private community interactions like I, i'm not arguing that milady is changing the systems but i am arguing that in some pretty important ways i think this kind of goofy looking por profile pick nft collection is changing the narrative um and so that's what i'm kind of going to dive into so now that we've kind of established that i think miladies are making narrative change H how are they doing so right um and so i think the first thing is just what what is a milady and you know before we get into any of this exciting change stuff so hopefully you guys are excited about this video and let's dive right in all right so i'm gonna record the screen a little bit what is a milady right and let's just go to open here and let's just look at what what a milady actually is so milady is an nft collection there's about 10k of them um, they're on Ethereum, they're profile pick, that's what this category PFP here means. Um, and, you know, floor price is currently, gosh, three quarters of an ETH. That's higher than it was when I, when I last checked, so that's kind of, that's hype to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're these Neo Chibi style, kind of like Japanese aesthetic NFTs. And if you look at them here, you know, they're both genders, they have a bunch of drip, a lot of it has to do around the drip score, you know, Prada bucket hats in the style of miladies, of course, of course. Um, this is an A score milady, like drip score. So that means a lot of drip, right? And so it's kind of a fun profile pick, right? And going into, you know, like the first item of narrative change, right? I think the first item of narrative change is really this idea is art. NFTs as community versus NFTs as art. So let's get it. So yeah, like I said, first narrative change. How, you know, what were NFTs when they were art? How did they kind of become or how did the narrative shift or change into this kind of community based, you know, platform? Uh, and I think if you remember the, the initial hype around NFTs, um, like the biggest name to watch, like I, I'd say maybe this is summer 21. Um, and I should definitely do my research, but, uh, this is just off the top of my head, um, was Beeple. I don't know if people remember this, but like the first big name in NFTs was this artist named Beeple who spent a bunch of time and launched like a, a ton of individual art pieces at once. And they, I think they're all like hand generated by him. And it was super impressive from an artistic point of view. Right. But I think as time went on. And this idea of the profile pick NFT became a became a popular thing, that narrative quickly shifted, right? And so while people were initially excited with the art side, and that's where the money was flowing, very quickly, um, like people started getting excited about this other side of NFTs, which is, oh, I actually get to identify with this group and be a part of a community online, which was different, right? And that's the first item of narrative change. Miladies are part of this big wave of profile pick nfts and another big name in this space is um uh board ape yacht club or um uh yeah just all all those apes um 
sorry, I, I don't really know too many of the other names for all, all those different, like funny, you, it's a Yuga Labs, right? Yuga Labs produced these, uh, Mutant Ape, right? Mutant Ape was the other one. Um, and yeah, I think what was clear with these bored apes and miladies is that people actually, there was something deeper than people's desire to see, uh, you know, avant-garde forms of art that was drawing them to the NFT space. Um, and so that's the first shift, right? Like the first shift was the narrative around NFTs. And so then going to the second shift, which is, I think, way more interesting, is actually something much larger scale and actually about the, the um, actually about social media itself, right? And on this community tangent or on this community point, right? Like social media, um, the original, the narrative before Miladies, right? Or yeah, I mean, largely the narrative before Miladies was that social media was a negative towards people's mental health and it accelerated isolation, right? Um, and I think if you look at all the f um, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, whistleblower slash teen mental health slash, um, you know, like teen girl body image or popularity image and how they identified online. Um, a lot of this stuff is super negative and that's what the public narrative around social media was. And, um, a, a lot of these NFT collections totally shifted that narrative. And I'd put Milady as, as the forefront of that narrative shift where the people are saying essentially, you know, like, w sure. Right. Like the technology itself could be used to accelerate isolation. Right. But on the other hand, like it's just as feasible and technically it's equally as possible to use the same systems right to accelerate connection and so that's why i say it's not a systemic change because twitter you know a social media platform where people were saying the same kind of negative narratives earlier is now being used in this kind of positive reverse way where people are saying okay like you know maybe i can actually take more control and I can actually find a community that I find enriching. And it, it could be something that I think is cool. And like this crypto stuff is almost like a second thought. Like, yeah, technically it's an asset that holds its value. And technically it could appreciate in a market-based way, right? But like, that's almost a second, that's almost like a second thought. Like that's almost not that important compared to, oh, like I'm fighting against the negative riz of like the internet and isolationism. In the, in the kind of modern world. And that's way more exciting. And I think, you know, if there was any community that, that decided, okay, I'm gonna spear this isolation narrative in its face, it was Miladies, right? Which is, you know, like cute PFPs. And I think that's, you know, I think it was an awesome narrative to rewrite. Um, and I think Milady, the Milady community is so unique in that they're willing to just put it all on the line. No, no shit's given, right? Like just tweet their heart out. And, you know, like spread love on the network. And I think that was super, super unique. And, and the last point that I'm going to make about narrative change is that this not only applies, I think, to social media, but I think it actually applies to the internet as a whole and personal growth and personal identity. And so let me explain what I mean by that. Um, I think the narrative around the internet, right, was one of a lot more I'd argue like pro post-traumatic stress or traumatic stressors, right? Where you're just kind of this, this agent that's subjected to all this negative kind of propaganda and, and you know, like you're, you're exposed to a bunch of, you're, you're desensitized because you're seeing like a bunch of intense, violent or, you know, discouraging or sexual imagery and all this stuff is like screwing with your personal identity and it's like messing with your head. And I think that, Milady as a community on Twitter seriously turned that narrative from post-traumatic stress to a narrative of like post-traumatic growth where it's like, okay, like now we see all of these negative aspects of our identity or stuff that, you know, we thought that we were going to keep in our shadow or stuff that wasn't going to get uncovered kind of like, and we weren't going to have conversations about it. We were just going to feel uncomfortable and subjected to all these different public perceptions of, of, of these narratives. And Milady was kind of like, no. Right. Like we can kind of write this narrative as we're living it. Who's to stop us? And I think that's that's like totally valid. And I think that's exciting because I think that's what the Internet was originally formulated to do. Or at least that's how people envision the Internet. If you look back and you look at like 
like whole earth catalog internet, you know, like 90s internet or the people who are building on it there. Right? Like people were really excited about the connective tissue aspect, life improving aspect of the internet. And the whole kind of negative riz propaganda of, you know, mental health and and like trauma on the internet and stress on the internet and uh, just just like extremely abrasive content. I think that totally existed, but it didn't necessarily have to define people's experiences, right? And that's where Milady stepped in and said, look, I'm going to turn this post-traumatic growth, you know, post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth. And, you know, that's these uncomfortable topics are exactly the topics that people are joking about in the Milady community because if you don't joke through it, if you don't talk about it, if you don't bring it up, surface these kind of discomforts, you're never going to get through it, right? Like that's just going to be a shadow that's haunting you over your shoulder for the rest of your life. And Milady was just like the Milady community. And I said Milady as almost like a, a, a spirit, right? Like the spirit of the Milady network. So when I say Milady, I don't mean any lady <laughs> or, or I don't mean any one holder of the Milady collection, nor do I mean the people who made the original Milady collection. I mean the spirit of the Milady network that kind of coalesced on on Twitter, on Discord, on um, all these social media platforms, and I guess now on YouTube, right? Um, and yeah, like, I mean, if you think about just, you know, not having to be subjugated to the internet, being able to actually take control of it in this very active way, that's exciting. That's narrative change, right? And that's on the same systems that were originally used to kind of like destroy your mental health or destroy your mental state or make you insecure about your beliefs or make you insecure about like some of the natural, you know, like stuff that goes on in your head. And so I think the future of, of NFTs, the future of digital communities, I think it looks a lot like Miladies. And so that's why I say these are transformative value, right? Like it's not just financial value. And it's something that we're watching play out real time. So yeah, this is just quick. I guess I'm just excited about this in the new year. Um, and oh yeah, I wanted to post something positive as we go into this year. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing what people think about this. And if you're a big NFT collector or if you're in the Milady community, a big fan, please tap in. Uh, I'm just a, a happy face willing to chat anytime, seriously. Yeah, all right. Peace out and make sure to follow the woke intern. Stay woke.